initially signed, but then ended up having a conflict. Hey, Lance, yeah. how are you this evening? Great, thank you. My palms have already started sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is good. I have to do, to do something about this office I'm in. The backlighting is horrible. Yeah, I have to, as you can tell in mine, I have to turn the light off behind me or it's too much clear. Phil, I'm going to send you an email um, on a, um, a light bulb with a mercury in it, where, where the best place to dispose that is, how, how that should be done. You're muted, Bill. Household hazardous waste. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. I appreciate it. No problem. Unfortunately, that was last week. Yeah. I just replaced the bulb today. I'll save it till the next one. Yeah. Have the next one prepared with our. How was your hike on Saturday? It was wonderful, exhausting, but really good. The Ravana River Trail, the hike the loop, I think they called it around Charlottesville. It was really great to, to walk the distance and to see um, one, how great it is, and two, how much more we can do with it. And with things like e-bikes coming, um, we're really gonna be able to see some opportunity for non-motor vehicle um, transportation opportunities coming up so really it's really good yeah i mean i i only use that it really is a neat amenity to have that close you know oh, amazing just amazing i had done parts of it before but this was the first time all the way around and only had a few blisters to show for it hello everyone hello hey liz I almost forgot about this. It was really weird. I got sidetracked at about 5.30 and then I went, oh my God, am I supposed to have a meeting at 6? Yep. Just roll from one end to another. That's right. We have a lot of meetings. Not that this one isn't super important. This one is the one I'm really enjoying going forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Aaron, are you in your Porsche or your Land Rover? I'm in my, uh, I'm in a rental van that I had to get for Enterprise, <laughs> take my students on a field trip, and they couldn't sanitize it fast enough for me to get home. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm at the fire station. <laughs> oh, well, appreciate your dedication. Thanks. Where did you go on your field trip with your students? Anywhere good? Oh, we haven't gone yet. I had to get it for tonight to go for two days. Oh, oh wow. And yeah, and they weren't ready when I showed up at Enterprise. So I sat there for 40 minutes. So here I am on this. I'm at the uh, Nel um, Nelson County Fire and Rescue. <laughs> Parked. <laughs> You are almost home. Okay. Yeah, but there's there's 30, 30 minutes of no cell service between here and my house. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. But now you have fiber to the home, which I want. <laughs> yeah, if only I could have got there. <laughs> <laughs>
So my answer, I think Serena is saying she's got everyone. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if she would chat us to say that we're live. I think, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started, I think. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Lance Stewart. Um, I'm with Albemarle County. I'm the director of the Department of Facilities and Environmental Services. Uh, I and the project team uh, who've been working on this proposed project are um, here to, to explain uh, what the project is, what the services would be provided, what the, the benefits that we see are. Um, but this evening is going to uh, begin with a short presentation by um, David Binish. He's the planning chief in our community development department to tell you a little bit of detail about um, the reason we're uh, for the for the meeting um, and um, how it will proceed. So, um, David, thank you for being here tonight. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. I'm going to try to share my screen. Let me see if I can get this going. Can everyone see my presentation? Okay, good. Yes. So again, thank you all for coming. This is a community meeting on the Southern Albemarle Convenience uh, Center proposal. Um, and first of all, I'd start by um, explaining the purpose of such a meeting. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to share information about the proposal and the review process and to allow time for the public to ask questions and provide comments on the The consultant will be getting into more details about the location and the proposal itself, but to start, I'll give you a, a make sure everyone is aware of where we are talking about. The proposal is located on um, Esmont Road. It is uh, the highlighted parcel, tax map parcel 12182A2. It's in the Keene area. It's about 900 feet south of the Esmont Road intersection with Route. Uh, this property is zoned uh, RA Rural Areas, and the property also technically lies within the entrance corridor overlay district um, for Route 20, uh, but the site is not visible from Route 20 due to the intervening property between Route 20 and, and the subject property and the existing vegetation. Uh, the proposed use is considered a by right use um, in that it's a public use and public uses are permitted by right in all zoning districts, including the RA district. Uh, the property uh, is designated rural in our and for rural use in our county's comprehensive plan and land use plan. Because the project is not explicitly identified in the comprehensive plan, uh, specifically noted for this type of facility uh, in this uh, general area, um, the project, again, is not specifically identified on that plan. Uh, Can I just say something, uh, David, you're, you're not coming through really well if you could, when you move your head away from the mic. Okay. Is that, is that a little bit better? Yes, that's much okay. better. Okay. Um, so again, to just recap real quickly, public uses are allowed by right in all zoning districts. However, when a public building structure or use um, is not explicitly included in an adopted comprehensive plan or land use plan, uh, a compliance with the comprehensive plan review is required, which is the case here. Uh, for a CCP review, compliance with the comprehensive plan review, the project is reviewed for whether the general location, character, and extent of the proposed facility are in substantial accord with the adopted comprehensive plan and other relevant plans, studies, and documents that inform the comprehensive plan and and public policy decisions. CCPs are reviewed by the Planning Commission, uh, which makes a finding on the CCP um, and its compliance with the plan. Uh, that finding is forwarded to the Board of Supervisors for information. 
no board action on a CCP is required. I think it's worth noting and clarifying that uh, the Planning Commission's actions are only related to the consistency of the use to the comprehensive plan. It is not necessarily an action or recommendation on whether the project should be constructed. Uh, that decision ultimately lies with the Board of Supervisors. Um, the steps in the process are the community meeting that we're having here to inform the public of the project and to receive comments. Um, the Planning Commission's review, as we've just mentioned, and then uh, ultimately the completion of a site development plan process for the proposed development of the site. Uh, that would follow um, an action by the Planning Commission if found in compliance. I will note that that process has begun. Uh, an initial site plan has been submitted, but a final would not be submitted, reviewed, and approved until the CCB, the, the compliance review process is completed. So the timeline that we're on is this community meeting we're having today and the Planning Commission um, work session, which is uh, scheduled at this point in time for October 19th of 2021. So Lance, that's my quick overview of the purpose of the meeting. Uh, a little background information about the review process. So I'll turn it back over to you. Great, David. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll, I have a screen to share as well. One moment, please. Okay, thank you. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? I'll take that as a yes. Um, uh, hello again. So um, again, here to talk to you about this um, project. Um, and, and I'll introduce uh, some folks who will be speaking tonight. Again, I'm Lance Stewart, um, Philip McCaleps, uh, the Director of Solid Waste for the Ravana Solid Waste Authority is here. Um, they would be, they are managing the design and would manage the construction and eventually the operation of the uh, facility. Uh, and Campbell Bolton with uh, Drake Braid and Associates uh, is the project manager for the design team and will be uh, helping us present and answer questions today. So um, just some uh, brief, um, more recent background. Um, this site has been considered in the past for um, the same use actually, but uh, in, in February of Last year, um, the Elmore Board of Supervisors directed staff to um, pursue the development of, uh, of a convenience center uh, at this location, the parcel uh, Mr. Benish was showing you earlier. Um, and then uh, we returned, um, staff returned to the board um, the following month um, and the board appropriated uh, $1.1 million to fund the design and construction of the projects. Um, and that would include, of course, um, all the containers and compactors and other equipment that are necessary to run the operation. Uh, so since that time, um, uh, design has been initiated by uh, the Solid Waste Authority and Draper Aiden. We have some, uh, some renderings that we will be showing you to see what it looks like. Um, and then, we are, as David mentioned, uh, in the preparatory process now um, for a comprehensive plan compliance review uh, currently scheduled for October 19th of this year. Uh, so if, if you're not uh, familiar with uh, what a convenience center is, we haven't really defined that yet, but it's a place to take um, bagged household waste, um, also compostable food waste, uh, and, and the bulk of the site really dedicated to uh, bins for recyclables. So if you've been to the, um, the uh, recycling center um, downtown near the county office building or the new one uh, opened last year in Ivy, um, you'll know that they're um, separated waste streams for glass, plastics, paper and cardboard, um, tin, other metals. Um, in the future, um, the site in Keen might uh, also host um, what is currently hosted at Ivy, which would be um, special waste streams like hazardous waste or electronic waste. Um, and I'll just note that the, it is uh, fully staffed during all operating hours, the one at Ivy is, and certainly this one would be. Um, that's to ensure safety and um, 
people get the help they need when they need it. And also to help answer questions about what to put in which bin. So I mentioned, um, the, of course, the bagged household waste. That was the first um, bullet on the last slide. Um, this would operate similar to how the Ivy one is operated. There actually is a, a similar function there. Um, it's called the tag a bag um, uh, waste program. Um, and you can see uh, I've got an illustration of, of Sam on the right there, who's five foot eight inches tall and um, about how big a 32 gallon um, bag is compared to Sam. So it's a pretty good sized bag, as you can see. Um, and stickers would be sold um, by local merchants or can be purchased by mail for $2 each for a 32 gallon bag. Um, so, you know, that's, I think for many people would be cost convenient um, compared to the price of uh, curbside select collection, um, especially once you've hopefully sorted out your recyclables uh, from the non-recyclables. I think a 32 uh, gallon bag goes a pretty long way. Um, and uh, Phil, I think uh, I probably spoke over a couple of your slides there. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Phil McCaleb, would you step in here? Glad to. Um, yeah, so we run the recycling centers at McIntyre and at Ivy. And this will, unlike McIntyre, this site is planned to be, as uh, Lance said, agabag trash. Um, this is really going to be focused for residential use or bagged trash. Uh, the, the intention, the design of the site is not to start to um, bring in commercial loads, material. Our intention is for that to continue to go to Ivy where there's scales and there's the room and the equipment to manage those bulky wastes. Um, so what I've included here is a picture of a, a self-contained compactor. Um, in the front there, there's a door, you open it up, you place your bags in, Periodically, the operator will compact it, and when it's full, or every day, we'll at least, we'll pick it up and bring it out to Ivy to be uh, unloaded at the transfer station and, and brought back. And the purpose of that is so that we don't have really any major chance of leakage or uh, accumulation of things for vectors, you know, rats and what have you. So um, I think this design's going to prove to be a pretty tidy operation. Go to the next slide, please. Um, our operating hours, we're going to run this similar to what we found works at McIntyre um, and Ivy. We operate six day work schedule. We have one day closed. Uh, we find that's almost necessary because you have equipment maintenance, site maintenance. Um, it's always good to have one day where you can go in without um, having to dart in and around uh, customers at the site and pull all the containers. Um, so we like to try and have one day where we're not uh, operating. Our thought here is that Thursday would be the most convenient day for customers. Um, currently, we've thought about our service hours as uh, sort of utilizing the same ones we use at McIntyre, which is 8.30 to either 5.30 during the winter hours or 6.30 during the summer. Um, but there's flexibility there that if because a lot of the traffic is dr driving on people the way to work in the morning, you know, it's, it's possible we might want to open earlier. So we have some flexibility on our opening hours. Uh, next slide, please. I'll probably turn, I think the best turn this back to you, Lance. Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Phil. Um, so um, just the next few slides really kind of talk about um, some of the benefits to the community uh, other than um, the convenience of, of having a place to take your um, um, household waste to. And one of those was that when there's a convenient place to do that, um, it reduces um, illegal dumping. And to the left here, you can see a, a map of Albemarle County. Um, the red dots are you know, official complaints um, to the Albemarle County Police Department over a previous three year period. And, and you can see that broadly speaking, the further you get from, um, from uh, the uh, development areas and a prevalence of 
curbside um, recycling, the, the more frequently uh, that, that you do have complaints of illegal dumping. Um, and, and also we, uh, has been proven um, in other places in the country to curb uh, illegal dumping and, and open burning as well. Again, it's just a matter of having a place that people can reasonably take um, their solid waste to when they need to. Um, so again, this is uh, kind of a redundant um, map at this point. This shows the, the site again. This is um, 20 towards Charlottesville, Plank Road. So it's a, it's a real nexus of this area. Um, uh, it's about six miles north of Scottsville um, and um, really centrally located. And this next slide is intended to illustrate that. Um, so uh, this red dot in the middle where my cursor is, I hope you can see that, the small red dot is the, is the location. Um, and this uh, red circle is a, a seven and a half mile radius uh, where it's you know really short trip. Uh, for most people. And then the, the blue circle is a slightly longer radius. So we anticipate that this would be the, the service area. Um, and as you can see, the, the location really covers uh, the southern part of Valdemar County, at least the southeast part, um, um, optimally well, we think. Uh, so, um, there's a great question of what it will look like. Um, I, I think uh, that's always of interest to anyone, but especially in a rural area where you're trying to protect uh, the nature of the rural area generally. So I'm uh, gonna ask Campbell uh, Bolton with Draper Aiden to um, handle the next few slides and kind of walk us through this. Campbell, just let me know when you're ready to advance the slide. Okay, will do. Yeah, thanks. So as Lance mentioned, I'm Campbell Bolton, um, the civil engineer on the project. So we're kind of responsible for the, the site layout and, and the features on the site. This kind of gives an overview of the site from a rendering that we created based on, on the site plan. So I think we'll flip through and get a little closer view of the site plan and a few other rendering shots. So Lance, if you want to go to the next slide. So this is kind of a, a rendering view of the same rendering if you're on the road headed, headed south. Uh, as you're approaching the facility, there will still be a buffer of trees between the road and the facility. So as you're approaching, it'll be minimal uh, view of the facility. Um, and and there will, there'll be a sign similar to Ivy and McIntyre noting the facility there. Move on to the next slide. Um, this, uh, speaking of the roadway, this is kind of our initial traffic plan where we were thinking um, it provides the site distances showing that there's adequate site distances both to the right and the left at the entrance. It also has some data on the volume of traffic anticipated and comparing that to VDOT figures and guidance determination that no left or right turn lane would be required based on the volume of traffic on the existing road and the anticipated volume of traffic generated by the facility. And those numbers were kind of used as estimates based on recent traffic counts at the Ivy and McIntyre facilities. Uh, moving to the next slide. Um, this is kind of moving down the roadway a little bit as you pass it directly in front of the entrance. Um, as you can see what you're, you're looking at, a uh, compactor and then the attendance shed kind of there in the front, as well as the fence around the facility, it will be fenced with a uh, with screening along the fence. This shows the gate open. It will be, the gates will be closed when the facility is closed. Um, also, you can see on the right that there will, will be planting additional screening trees in the area to the right. Uh, that area is since it's underneath the telephone pole does not, or telephone wires does not have as many existing trees. So we'll be supplementing those plantings to help screen the facility. Move on to the next slide, please. Okay, I believe this slide and the next one are, this is the site plan that we've prepared and then the next one's a similar view, view of the rendering. Um, as you can see, as you come off the roadway, you would be directed to, to, the, to veer to the right within the facility, such that it's a one-way traffic loop around the facility to help with congestion. 
Um, this view shows up to 23 parking spaces. It shows up to 14 containers for recyclables such as glass and plastics. Um, as you come in, immediately in front of you on the right will be one compactor for cardboard, similar to the, the other facilities. Um, and then there would be two to three larger bins for tins and metals that you would walk up on the platform, similar to McIntyre facility. As you swing around, around the site, yeah, this is a good one, this probably shows it a little bit clearer. Um, swings around the site on the way out, there will be lanes for two of uh, the solid waste compactors, which is where you would drop the, the tag -a bag bags into those where you'd pull up beside, get out of the car and put them in, in there. Uh, and then at, on the far top of this page would be the kind of the bypass lane for people who just have recyclables. They could bypass those compactors and head out the site. Um, the center would be a small landscape island and also have the attendance shed in the middle. Um, and we would be adding screening trees and in, in the fence around the perimeter to, to help shield the facility. I think that's a pretty good brief overview, but I'd be happy to answer any specific questions if they come up. Um, thank you, Campbell. Um, Phil, did you have anything you wanted to add um, to, the, to the layout or operation of the site? Um, I'll just mention then one thing that, um, that, that we haven't mentioned is that um, because uh, the facility will be operated in daylight hours, um, our plan does not call for any site lighting. Um, the, the gate again will, will be secured at night and, uh, and we won't be contributing to, to glare in the community with um, un unnecessary lights. Thank you, Campbell. So that, that is a short presentation. Um, and at this point, um, I will ask um, our, our Serena Gruya, who's uh, operating the technology for us, to, to please um, um, let us know if there are any questions. Perfect. Sure. Thank you. And um, I put in the chat directions on how to use the Q&A pod. I do see that, that we have a few people that are calling in. And if you'd like to raise your hand to share your question or comment, uh, on the phone, please dial star nine and uh, we will see that your hand is raised and then we can um, get you uh, to be unmuted. Uh, we do have two questions in the Q&A pod right now and uh, one question that came in, if you wanna stop sharing your screen, Lance. Uh, the first question is, uh, what are the large containers on the right-hand corner of the design? I believe you're the referencing that the three largest that were in the bottom right, and those would be the containers for the metals and tins. So similar to the, the McIntyre facility, those would have the open tops and you'd walk up and drop the, the recyclables into the top of, as opposed to the smaller bins, which have the, the openings on the side where you would walk up just to the side of them and put the recyclables into kind of the side that's a covered container. Okay, and then uh, our next question is, where exactly will this be on Asmont Road and how close to Mount Pleasant Church or closer, um, how close to the church or is it closer to the Asmont community? Um, I'll, I'll try to answer that. I, I'm not sure how close it is to the church, but I can say uh, that it's about um, 100 yards, 150 yards from the post office in Keene on Ismont Road. So it's almost all the way to 20. Uh, and I think it's about five miles, uh, for instance, from, from Ismont itself. All right. Uh, the next question is, are there plans for hardwood mulch or composted topsoil for pickup? I'll take that one. Um Currently, no. And the reason for that is, is we don't plan on having equipment sited there um, to load or unload or manage those products, nor would we plan on having a scale for uh, weighing out and selling it. Um, additionally, we're also trying to avoid doing cash sales at the site because of security concerns for the attendance. All right, and um, Margaret asks, will the site plantings be primarily native? Yeah, 
Yes, yes, they will be. The, the site plantings exactly have not been determined yet. That'll be determined during the final site plan design, but they will follow the Albemarle County approved list of native plantings. Okay, I have um, two callers that uh, have raised their hand. Um, phone number ending 6488. Uh, if you could unmute. Hello. There you go. We can hear you. Would you like to ask your question or share your comment, please? Yes, you can hear me okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, this is Hal West. I live next door to the proposed site. My wife and I have been here for 27 years or so. Uh, we went through this fight before and uh, a lot of problems. The first thing I see is for, for all of us down here is that we do not understand why you do not put this site where it's needed in the Scottsville area or in Mill Creek where there's so much development going on at Mill Creek. Mill Creek can go to McIntyre, fine. Scottsville is where it could be used successfully. Just add on some bins behind the old high school where the retirement center is. There's, there's, a, tra there's a cardboard bins right now. All you've got to do is add a few more bins, have somebody pick up there. There are a lot more people down there than the intersection at Keene. I mean, come on. We don't need it there, and we don't need the trees ripped down, and Keene just needs to be left alone as a water, uh, water testing site like it has been for years. Also, yeah, we've seen the site plan. It's just like McIntyre. A small footprint would be fine, but it's still going to be noise, uh, a lot of noise, probably rats and everything for us. Uh, also, if the, these gentlemen know about their uh, the power lines there, the uh, Appalachian Power had a crew come through last fall and mow all the trees, a lot of trees down, 50 feet on each side of the power line, and they're only supposed to go 20 or 30 feet. They ripped it all down. I don't know how you guys think you're going to plant trees right there under the power line. That's ridiculous. Uh, I also worry about um, our, our um, property values going through the toilet here when this comes in and just ruins everything for us and especially for the neighbor behind me who is 60 feet from your property, 50 feet from your property. So that's what I've got to say. I don't know. I don't know why you can't have this in person. Everybody's opened up. The county office building has opened up. Everybody's going to restaurants. Why are we doing this on the phone and not in person at the county office building? Okay, this is Barbara speaking, and of course, we're sitting here on the telephone because we don't have internet that supports Zoom, and no one provided us an alternative, so we can't see what you're showing. But for all of you that can, this might look really appealing on paper with your lovely color drawings and brochures. But I would like to know how many of you supervisors and other people who vote on this have actually been down here to Keene, to this site, and have actually looked at the roads that we're dealing with, the intersection, these small, narrow, winding, rural roads. And have you come down here and looked at what you're proposing to do? I don't know, but it's, uh, it's appalling to me that anyone would actually choose this site for such an operation when you have sites that are already in an industrial area that would harm no one, benefit many, and would be so much more cost-effective and a 
much less carbon footprint than you are proposing. Just a moment. You have something, Hal? Uh, commercial enterprise is what they're putting in. Yeah, you're putting a commercial enterprise or an industrial enterprise in a in agricultural industrial area. Rural, rural. A rural area. You can take us out of the equation totally. You know we're against it. But even if we're not, pretend that we're not the ones talking to you, it's still a ridiculous place to be putting such an operation. That's all I have to say. Put it where it's needed. Put it where it's needed. That is not it. Thank you, Mr. Okay. and Mrs. West. All right. Um, our next question is, um, it's, it's, it's a little similar. It's, uh, what are the closest residences to the facility and have surrounding residents been notified about this project? So maybe Lance, you can share a little bit about how um, notice was shared with the community. I'm going to let um, Campbell answer the first part of that question. And if, if David is um, still on, I know he's got the, um, in, in his head, the, the uh, radius um, that is required for the two notices that went out and the number of people possibly as well. Campbell, would you help us out with the first one, please? Yeah, so the first one, uh, there, there are two yeah. residents that are in close proximity. Um, the, the first one, the west to the south, the, the property line is approximately 300 feet from the closest recycling bin. And the, from the house to the recycling bin is approximately 500 feet. Um, to the east, the house to the property line is approximately 100 feet, and the closest recycling bin is about 475 feet to the house. Not really. Thank you, Kimball. All right, another yeah, question um, is, oh, sorry, go ahead, well, let me, uh, David. I was trying to double check and I'm still looking. I believe we did a half mile radius and I think it was 60 properties. Um, and I, I will continue to check to make sure that that is accurate. We usually do the notices based on a quarter mile or half mile radius. And I think we chose the half mile radius. And I, my recollection off the top of my head was approximately 60 but I will try to confirm that. It, it was also uh, sent out um, from the uh, Yancey Community Center. Ed Brooks sent it out as an email to everyone on his list also, but that wasn't until very recently. So I just want to mention that that notification was given that way also to try to reach more um, Esmont uh, residents. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, will there be opportunities to have special waste days at this site due to most of the illegal dumping occurring in the area has been tires and furniture? That's something that we uh, have internally talked about. Um, we'd have to see what kind of uh, facilities we'd be talking or what kind of operations we'd be talking about. Um, Obviously, if it requires equipment, we need to take into consideration, you know, um, how that would fit in with its um, operations as a recycling center. But yeah, I mean, that's something we've talked about. Nothing's planned as yet, though. And then we have uh, another person, Peter, who's uh, calling in and raised their hand. Uh, Peter, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I have I have a couple of comments. I live about a mile from the uh, intersection of Route 20 and Plank Road. I live on Green Mountain Road. And um, I'm very concerned about the increase in traffic from a safety perspective. These, uh, these, these roads, both Plank Road and Esmont Road, are notoriously curvy. And in addition, uh, because we're in a, a beautiful area of Southern Elmarl, there are quite a number of uh, bikers that ride along these roads regularly. Um, in fact, uh, there are some 
triathlon, triathlon competitions that often use these roads. My uh, daughter was an avid cyclist and uh, I've convinced her never to ride on these roads. They're just absolutely dangerous. And for anybody who's proposing this facility, they ought to ride along Plank Road and they ought to ride along Esmont Road and see how dangerous this is to, uh, to bikers and other people who use the roads. Whenever I hear that there's an accident on Route 20, I call my wife to make sure that uh, she was nowhere near the intersection of Plank Road and 20. And you should uh, investigate quite thoroughly the um, incident reports at, at that intersection. That's number one. Number two, I agree completely with the idea that the location in a rural setting away from Scottsville is a crazy location for this, for this uh, facility. I think it should be, uh, and many of the people that you're gonna hear from today and in the future, I have good ideas about where this could be sited in Scottsville, where people congregate as a, uh, more naturally. Finally, I agree with the idea that we ought to be doing this in person. I'm a trustee of uh, the engineering school at the University of Virginia, a public institution. Uh, we are holding a meeting on the 15th in person. I uh, served on a subcommittee of the Board of, uh, of Visitors at the University of Virginia over the summer where we were thinking about issues of tuition at the University of Virginia, a public institution. Those meetings were in person and, and open to the public if, if they wanted to attend. We'd have a better dialogue and communication and exchange of ideas if this were in person. So I really encourage that to happen in the future. In summary, I think this team ought to look hard at more reasonable uh, locations where people already congregate or um, are there. I know that there are some facilities already in Scottsville that uh, could be expanded. And I would think that it would be a much better use uh, of that property as opposed to what we're talking about here. So those are my comments for now. And I'm sure we'll continue the discussion later. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. All right. Um, another question that came in, uh, are there vehicle limitations? Are there traffic regulations? Um, and are residents outside of the county, so non-county residents, are, are they allowed to use the center? I'm pausing. Would you mind, Rio? I can't find that in the um, the list of questions. Could you just take that two questions? I think there were two there, though. Could sure. Um, so first, will non-county residents be allowed to use the center? Okay. Phil, I'll ask you to, as the operations manager, to answer that one. Thank you. Um, to be frank, yes. Uh, we're collecting recyclables. Um, those have value, we'll take those. And if the bags have tagged the tags on them, we're not gonna have somebody at the gate checking licenses or county tags or residence requirements. Thank you, Phil. All right, and then um, are there any kind of vehicle limitations or traffic regulations that you're gonna bring in onto the site or um, adjacent roadway? Um, oh, well, I would say certainly a, a, a vehicle that we would um, uh, keep off of the site would be a commercial hauler um, with, with, a, with a large load or intending to, to unload um, at any point. This, there's been some confusion um, in the, over time about whether uh, the proposed use is actually a transfer station where large haulers would, um, would bring um, lo loads of trash to dump and be um, compiled with other loads of trash and, and hauled away. And that is um, not what is to be happening here. So the only large trucks on the, the site will be those um, owned and operated by the Solid Waste Authority to take the recyclables away um, to be recycled and the trash away to the transfer station in Ivy. 
All right, we've also received a few comments. Um, one comment that came in through the Q&A pod is, um, I think it's Peggy, uh, very pleased that this rural area has been established to support our residents with this great resource. I'm on my iPad and unable to speak for some reason. The majority of our rural residents in this area are excited that we are receiving this resource. Thank you. Um, we have another comment that came in um, via the chat. Uh, I live east of Keene. I'm very happy to have a convenient location to recycle. I will also be able to use the tag a bag and quit my curbside service. So those are just comments that came in. Um, and now we'll go to another question. Uh, Aaron asks, how would the proposed toxic waste be processed? What precautions would be taken to prevent this from becoming a brownfield site? Well, I think this is you again. Um, so first off, we'll be taking old trash that's in bags. Uh, those will be put in a self-contained compactor. Um, and so there, I really don't see a lot of avenue for there to be leachate generated at the site um, and cause any uh, on-site problems. Um, those will be hauled to uh, Ivy where we have a permitted facility um, for management. The recyclables are um, non-hazardous, non-toxic already, um, or we wouldn't, we wouldn't be allowed to take them. So from a environmental health perspective, this is a very low risk site. And Phil, maybe it would be helpful if you could talk about um, how the household management waste days um, at Ivy are managed. Okay, correct. Um, so HHW days are a, a special exclusion that was built into the law that defines how we as a country manage uh, hazardous waste and it defines what hazardous waste is. Um, and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds there, but we, even at Ivy, which does have an environmental history from the landfilling there, we use a contractor, um, MXI right now, that comes in and manages all those wastes without any release to the environment, packages them, and then hauls them off site for treatment, storage, or disposal. So again, they're, the whole point of the operation is such that the the, these chemicals aren't, aren't being released even inadvertently to the environment at the site where we um, manage them. So again, if we were to at some point in the future decide to do a household hazardous waste event at this site, um, it would be through that contractor with all those same precautions um and they have, have you know the ability to respond to anything and we of course oversee those very very closely on top of that so all right um we have an attendee named paula paula has provided a lot of uh comments and questions paula i'm wondering if i unmute you if you'd like to share um your concerns i'm going to do that now in case you are interested in that Yeah, um, I have uh, I have a number of questions that I would like to have answered, and I uh, would like to know what number of people that you you said that you have estimated the number of people that will use this convenience center. I'd like to know what that number is, and I also am wondering if this service is intended, if this convenience center is intended to service Scottsville and also Mill Creek, Mill Creek South. Lenovia and all of those. Um, I think they're all within a 10 mile radius. And if so, I'm, uh, I, I seriously question the concept that Route 20, which is a scenic byway um, and a very narrow uh, two lane road could possibly um, handle all of that traffic and with trucks coming in daily. I saw a truck today try to turn at the intersection with 20 and then go around the curve where the entrance to the site would be. And he hardly made it and he had to pass over in the other lane. And that is a blind curve coming in if you're coming towards Route 20. 
So um, this is we, this was proposed back in 2014, and there was a public meeting. There were probably more than 200 people that came there um, to protest the site for all of these reasons, um, and especially the traffic on 20. It's a fatal intersection. There have been many deaths um, at the intersection of 20 and Route 715. Um, and in terms of traffic currently, uh, commuting hours really start at 6 a.m. and go till 9. They start at 4 and go till 7. And then we have school buses in between. So if you have an accident on that road, there's no alternative routes. Everybody is stuck there for uh, possibly at times hours. I don't see how adding this kind of traffic, if you're going to drag people down, from uh, Renovia, uh, Mill, Creek, Mill Creek, there's more than 6,000 residents there. We're gonna drag them you know, 10 miles down the road. Um, talk about environmentally uh, being not good because uh, what's, what, what is the effective carbon footprint of all those people coming uh, down here? Keen has what, less than 500 people. So it, it truly does make no sense to cite this in Keene. Um, if you look at other states that have high percentage rates of recycling, and what you will see is they normally cite recycling at schools, at shopping centers, um, or in industrial areas. And that's why when we last considered this in 2014, and it was determined not to proceed forward here at Keene, um, the other site looked at was Mill Creek, which is an industrial area. Most of the population is there. Um, there's a fair number of population, but probably half that amount or a quarter of that amount in Scottsville. But as someone pointed out, there are some recycling at Scottsville, and that certainly could be expanded. Um, it, it's really a, a very poor site in terms of visibility, in terms of no roads, in terms of um, and inconsistency with the area. I mean, this this is um, the picture depicts it in the middle of woods, and it really is. Other than the fact that the county owns the site, it's hard to understand that anyone objectively looking at the site would determine to place this here. I don't think it, you're serving. I don't think you're going to encourage people to recycle if it is located here. It's not where they go. Most people in Southern Albemarle, a lot of them commute to Charlottesville. You take your recycling as you're going. Um, it, you know, it, it really is is not really the right place for this to be. Thank you, Paula. Um, Lance, if you might, it sounds a lot like there's uh, just questions about um, what, you know a few years ago uh, site selection and. So what what came what how did we get to the decision um, where this was the optimal location for this convenience center? Um, you know, I, I think um, ultimately it comes down to uh, I think the equitable delivery of services in this county. Um, you know, there there are um, people who can um, you know who, who live in in urban areas that are easily served have easy access to service and there are people in rural areas uh, who have very difficult access to service. Um, and, and so the, the remoteness of the, of the people compared to the services that are offered in the community right now uh, is certainly a disadvantage in, in the lower income area. Um, the, that disadvantage is, is multiplied. Um, the specific site I, I believe was, was you know, purchased by the county in the 1980s for the specific purpose of providing you know this service to that area so i, I believe the um leadership although certainly um, has, has varied throughout the years has recognized that um, this is a site with potential to serve people who are you know effectively unserved um, and uh, you know in the the room with me if they if they care to clarify uh, our board of supervisors members but, um, who were part of those discussions, if they would um, like to add some perspective to that I missed. Otherwise, um, I, I think that that and, you know, the specific, uh, you know, crossroads location of, of the site and how um, it, it is, um, you know, convenient to, to many, uh, co you know, the, the main core routes through the southern part of Albemarle County um, made it um, seem 
uh, to be able to facilitate serving those uh, people in Southern Alabama. I would like to add a few more things since I was here in 2014 um, for the discussion that took place at that point. And I heard from the, the folks and thank you, Lance, you did an excellent job explaining um, the major reason why we decided to pick this place. But I have just a couple sentences to add and not take too much time away from those who want to comment from the public. Um, after the 2014 um, meeting about where to put a convenience center and how to serve the most people um, who need it the most. Uh, we um, formed a solid waste committee, which we had many people from the, um, from the community on, uh, experts, regular citizens, and we developed a solid waste, a long-term solid waste management plan. And this then became implementing this plan working very closely with Ravana and um, Solid Waste Authority, who has done an excellent job and has an excellent reputation at the Ivy for keeping things clean, for running it properly. Um, one of the issues was that it was going to be a private, privately run uh, facility in 2014. This one we will have control over. We have a proven authority that can run this in, a, in, a, in an efficient, clean way. And the citizens will have some say if they're having problems uh, with it. There'll be uh, avenues for feedback. Um, and one of the things that we found out in this management plan was that we have a lot of people in the rural areas that can't get this curbside service for either price or they live down a long driveway for whatever reason. And um, the larger haulers just don't go down people's driveways, et cetera, anymore. Um, so for all those reasons of equity and, um, and convenience to Southern Albemarle, we decided that this was an excellent site. I know many questions have been about the traffic and accidents and how we did a, a, a um, traffic count on Esmont Road, and I suspect that Lance can uh, go, or, or uh, Campbell can go over how that was done, because uh, I did see that question in there, but I'll stop now. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Palmer, and um, <clears> this <throat> Supervisor Price, Scottsville District. I live in Southern Albemarle, and for myself and our other community members who live down there, our drive to the IV Materials Utilization Center is about 45 minutes each way, an hour and a half driving for the five or 10 minutes you may be out there, which basically means you're taking um, a good bit of a day just to be able to go out there. If you look at the proposals, we have Ivy, we've got McIntyre, we're looking for this one in the southern part of the county, and then the next plan is to put one in the northern part of the county which will provide um, accessibility to our residents throughout the county. And I think the slide that showed the map with the seven and a half mile radius and the 10 mile radius is what really shows this to be uh, a very centralized and ideal um, general area for this center because it covers Scottsville and it goes a good bit of the way up towards Charlottesville. If you had a similar circle drawn around Ivy, and McIntyre, you'd start to see how you're really starting to cover most of the county. If this facility were placed in the town of Scottsville, you essentially eliminate half of the people that would be conveniently served by this facility because they would be living too far north. And in addition, it would mean if they wanted to take their recyclables or their household trash on their way to work, they'd have to go south to turn around and go north. I think, Mr. McCallops, when you mentioned that there can be flexibility on the um, opening or closing hours, that's something that could be taken into consideration that one or a few days a week open a little earlier to make it very convenient for people from Southern Albemarle driving into Charlottesville to be able to drop off their garbage before it gets smelly in their trunk on their way into work. Um, I have brought up um, with county staff several times um, that we do have to pay attention to road concerns, safety, traffic concerns, and there are a number of options that can be pursued to try and enhance the safety of the location. 
Um, but I think there, uh, so for all of these reasons and more, and especially the equity aspect, one of the most common comments that I hear as a supervisor is the county doesn't provide the same resources and services to Southern Albemarle that the um, Urban Ring and some of the other areas in the county are receiving. And this is a real effort to accomplish that. Another one of the slides, I think it was number nine, that showed the actual footprint of this facility on the property shows it's relatively small in terms of the full lot. The distances have been provided 450, 500 feet, whatever those exactly were. The county has, an, has I think, a responsibility to do some buffering through natural plantings, which will help try to reduce it. And finally, I would just add a couple of other um, observations and comments about locations that do have convenience centers. Nelson County has six of them. Um, one of them is just down the street from where one of my, what, I've got family that lives in Nelson County and it's just down the road from them. It's kept neat, it's kept clean. They don't have to worry about animals coming in at night. And as you know, has been expressed here by Mr. McCallops, we're talking about facilities and systems that will prevent um, spills and waste. Um, other, other states where I've traveled have got these convenience centers um, conveniently located for their community members. And I, I believe that we in Albemarle County have an obligation to provide a center like this. And, and it appears to me at this point that this is actually a better location than down in Scottsville. And it's not needed as much up near Mill Creek because they do have, as Supervisor Palmer mentioned, they have companies that will pick up their garbage. You know, those of us that live a mile in the woods, we don't have that opportunity. And I know I'm just one of many in our community. Thank you, Mr. Stewart, for the opportunity to comment. You're muted, Lance. I was just thanking you both. Um, very much appreciate you being here. So Lance, uh, to address the, the traffic concerns, we have um, a few questions that have come in about um, traffic and speed. Uh, a question about how, um, how you received the estimate of traffic volume expected, and then um, looking forward, it, um, what are remedies that if, you know, looking forward, if there was, if there was some need for um, increased turning lanes or widening the roads, uh, there was a question about that. Um, certainly, we um, we used as as a comparison point um, really a, a blended rate of the vehicle counts between um, the Ivy um, Convenience Center um, on an average day and also on a, a, a on a peak day, which is generally a Saturday. So a blended rate rate between that site and the McIntyre site, which is obviously in a, in a much more dense area and has higher volume, um, and, and we blended that rate to 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 be more of an average between the two, um, so that so that we re could really anticipate, um, you know, on a busy Saturday if this is, you know, a very popular site and it, it may be um, uh, perhaps more popular than than Ivy um, because of its rural nature and, and the fact that there are so many people who don't have a convenient way to to get rid of their trash. Um, so we, we blended that rate and we came up with a figure, if I recall correctly, of uh, an average of 96 um, visitors per day and um, a weekend peak of 190 residents. Um, Campbell may, may be able to, to um, correct me on that, but Campbell, if you, if you wouldn't mind addressing a little bit about the, in the process with um, the Virginia Department of Transportation's um, review of the plan and the requirements for the entrance. Right, so yeah, the, the entrance requirements, we're, we're following the VDOT guidelines and VDOT is reviewing these plans. And as we continue on to the final site plan, we'll continue to review them to ensure that they're in compliance with the regulations. Um, Lance, I believe the numbers you quoted were the actual numbers from Ivy. Um, I believe we bumped those numbers up a little bit from, from there. So the IV numbers were averaging about uh, 75 to 80 people on a weekday and 175 to 200 on a weekend. Um, we took that and, and bumped it up and used that within the VDOT uh, charts to, you know, I think we had maybe estimated 150 people per day. That averages somewhere around 20 people per hour if you 
average them out over the eight hours, obviously it would not be an equal, but that's just an average. Um, based on the existing roads, VDOT pr provides traffic data for our existing roadways, and they have traffic data for both Esmont Road and Route 20. Um, I believe they, Esmont Road estimated there were I believe 1,400 trips a day on that road going both directions or total directions. So that, that was the data that we used to compare our increase to the existing traffic that was from VDOT data. I really appreciate the correction, Campbell. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, we have a few comments that came in through the chat, so I'll share those. Um, we already have uh, multiple trash collection trucks driving on our rural roads. There are more than three different trash collection trucks that drive on the rural road where I live. There is also a lot of traffic from the wineries. I see this convenience center as a place where I can easily bring my recycling and trash on my way to Charlottesville. Another commenter shared, I think it's important to reiterate that this is a site for residential use. Uh, it's, it's not about industrial and commercial use. I, uh, you could add that the plan is to bring convenience and recycling centers to other areas that are underserved so that everyone has relatively easy access to recycling and affordable disposal of household waste. Uh, and finally, another commenter shared, I love the fact that I could do my postal drop-offs and recycling drop-offs on the same trip. I try to support the keen post office. I'm thrilled that studies have shown that this might reduce trash dumping on our rural roads. Even the McIntyre Center, which I now frequent, does not have huge traffic problems. It might make some sense to try to compensate the very nearest inhabitants in some way if they feel property value is threatened. I'm thrilled that this is an option for so many locals who don't have the time or bandwidth to go all the way to Ivy or McIntyre recycling. I'm not sure that the hazmat days or tire days fit this spot though. So those are some comments. Um, another question has come in. Uh, there was a survey being conducted at the McIntyre facility approximately four years ago. The surveyor mentioned that the other site, there are other sites are under consideration. Uh, Supervisor Price is addressing this now. Is a convenient center being planned for the Rivanna district? Um, I, yeah, I believe the one in the north um, and Supervisor Palmer, you may have the address uh, quicker off the tip of your, fin your, you know, your, your, your fingers than I do. Um, I don't remember if it was in Ravana or, um, or Rio, but um, somewhere up in that area. Supervisor Palmer? Well, it's actually going to be, in, and Lance can talk to this, but it's actually going to be, we expect, we, we are hoping that it can be because it is in the planning stage now and we are definitely not sure of this, let me put it that way. Um, but we are considering a site um, that is going to be entered off of Burkmar Drive. So as far as rural Ravana um, district, uh, it is, um, it, we don't have one uh, in place there yet. The idea or an idea of one. We're doing one at a time. This is part, as I said before, part of our long, uh, long range um, solid waste management plan that we developed back in 2015. And um, so this is our first, our first one was to put in Ivy. Our second one was to do Southern Albemarle. Our next one was to try to find a place up on 29 North in that area somewhere on the other side of Charlottesville and then go out east and west. Um, so we've got a multi-year uh, uh, plan to, to take care of here. And, uh, and uh, that, that's about all I can, I can say at this point. These are expensive. Uh, they require a lot of work from staff and a lot of work from the Ravana Solid Waste Authority. And I wish we could get them all in at once, but uh, we, we cannot do that. This is just our first one. So Lance, did I did I answer that okay in not promising that we were getting one off of Burkmar Drive? Yes, very well. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, and then um, we have a few questions um, around the site. Uh, how many people will live within that 7.5 mile radius? 
how many people live within the 10 mile radius? Lance? That, that answer can, can be found, but um, I, I'm afraid I, I can't, um, I don't know the answer um, currently. Okay. And then uh, do we have any idea what the projected noise level from the compactors and trucks might be? Phil, could you help us out with that one, please? Sure. Um, they make noise. Um, we, it's, it's something you can talk over when you're standing immediately next to them. They're not loud. Um, I think if you were standing at the fence line, not even at the property line, it's um, less than traffic noise on Esmont Road's going to be. Uh, at the property line, especially towards in the directions of of the the, the neighbors, I I don't believe you're going to be able to hear the compactors. It's uh, you know the it's just not a real loud sound. It's internal to the equipment. You know, it's not like uh, an exhaust that's blowing sound or emitting sound up into the atmosphere. I, you know, the, the probably the loudest sound will be the trucks when they come to pick up the uh, containers, the roll off containers, and that's a typical delivery truck. So it's it's going to be right in there, the same as the UPS guy or somebody delivering materials from one of the construction companies. That would be my experience. Thank you, Can Bill. you remind us the uh, the time ranges that we might expect to hear those trucks? I would try best we can I want those to be on um, the Thursday. So it's going to be say eight o'clock, nine o'clock till they are down there and picking up and removing uh, the cans. Um, the roll off compactor. You know, we're going to pick that up every day or the, uh, excuse me, the, the MSW, the, the trash compactor, we'll pick that up every day. Uh, but again, that's, you know, it, it's one quick in and you're done kind of event. It's not very often. All right. I have a caller who I think we might've heard from um, last numbers of the phone number 6488. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Your hand is raised. There we go. Am I on? Yes, you are. Um, I just wanted to add that nearly every person in Southern Albemarle drives to Charlottesville at some time for work, shopping, medical care, gas, business, pleasure, whatever. They drive through Mill Creek. They can drop off their garbage while they're doing other stuff. It's right there. There are already 6,000 residents and thousands more coming with all the townhouses that are going up. It just is a industrial area already with wide roads to support this kind of traffic. It they, just makes sense. I think trucks are not needed. We have problem, problem. We agree with everything Paula said earlier. She makes a lot of good points. And we think that uh, the large trucks are really going to be a nightmare at that intersection going in and out, even if it's just one day. It's just going to be a real, real problem. I think you still need to reconsider and have it, it's a lot cheaper uh, to have it in Scottsville, add a couple of bins, add a few bins there, work where you have some room to work around and not have to spend as much money, taxpayer dollars, That's that would be it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's now 7.12, we have um, a few more minutes left for questions. I see that there's a question for Mr. Stewart or Mr. Bolton. Are there other county centers serving larger or lesser numbers of people than the proposed Keene site? 
Um, I, I can try to answer that. I, I would say, you know, if you drew the same uh, seven and a half and, and 10 mile radius around the, the Ivy Convenience Center, you would get a, a portion of Charlottesville um, and probably all of, or, or most of the, the Crozet area, which are, which are certainly more dense. Um, that uh, is the only other at this time, you know, solely dedicated Albemarle County Convenience Center. Um, the um, Charlottesville Albemarle McIntyre Recycling Center, of course, is in the middle of the, you know, the, the city of Charlottesville and, and serves um, e even more people, but does not have the same um, types of services, particularly the um, tag bag trash program. And, and I, I just have to add that Ivy um, pulls in a lot more than a 10 mile radius of, uh, of the county, so. All right, I'm not seeing any new questions that haven't been addressed at this time. May I just um, mention uh, a couple of things that were brought up. Um, the county office building has not completely opened up for public meetings yet. And uh, that is one of the reasons why this is over Zoom. My understanding is that the letters went out, uh, did offer folks to go to um, uh, the Yancey Community Center that we could set them up with computers. And I believe Lance was at the Fifth Street office building that was also offered for that. Um, I, just, I just thought that would be a nice thing to add since we had a lot of comments about that. Oh, I see. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, another question just came in. Has this site ever been considered for a fire station? Um, you know, I, I can't say um, with any certainty whether it has. I've only been in my uh, current role with Alamo County for three years. Um, um, that that's another question we can we can consider, but um, uh, an answer and, and perhaps uh, try to do so at the planning commission meeting. Not that I I'm aware of. In in my eight years, it has not. Yeah, in my 35 years, it is not. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another, oh, Elliot, uh, who asked that question, um, might have a follow-up. Elliot, if you could unmute yourself. Thank you all for uh, taking the time and, and uh, having this public meeting. It, it, a fire station would really benefit this part of the county as well. We are in an area here that is not served uh directly by by that uh public service it, it really would be a good consideration i think um uh, for that site we are um 15 to 20 minutes in any direction for for direct service thank you thank you um another question where will the truckers take the containers they pick up from Keene? I got that one. Uh, the containers of recyclables will go to our paper sort facility in on off of Mead Avenue in Charlottesville. Uh, the container, uh, the compactor of trash, will go to Ivy. Oh, and then the two metals containers; uh, those are pulled by Gerdau, so they go straight to. Um, uh, the recycling facility in Roanoke. And Philip Glass. Um, could... oh, Glass goes to Ivy as well. I apologize. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we have a uh, phone number ending in 6488. Um, sorry, I don't know your name yet. Uh, you have your hand raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. All right, maybe that's a legacy. Oh, there we go. Hi. Once more, Hi. I just reiterate, before you guys vote, 
would you all please actually drive down here to the proposed can site and see what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. See the roads, see the intersection, see these little dangerous roads. This is so different from the industrial area at Mill Creek. And also for the record, the proposed site here at Keene will be 250 feet from the site to our house, if you if you to go a direct line. And in back where our neighbor Jeff Haney lives, a mere 50 feet. Thank Not you. acceptable. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm not sure if this is part of the planning yet, but um, another, maybe our last question is, uh, what route will the trucks take to transfer trash from this site to the Ivy landfill? Is that part of the planning process? I would direct them to go up 20 to 64 out to Ivy, get off at exit 114. Um, we've been working to keep our trucks off the small roads for the safety of our drivers as well as the public at large thank you uh well that was a robust question and answer period thank you all for sharing your um your questions and your comments um lance would you like to um add any last words um just a word of thanks for all of you um you know bringing you know, being here tonight, um, being really open with us um, about uh, your concerns about the project, that that we will certainly, um, you know, within the limits of of our abilities, such as they are, um, do everything we can um, to mitigate uh, some of the concerns that were raised. Um, you know, if this, if and when this project moves forward. Um, but again, uh, uh, we we were hoping that we would hear from you tonight, and and we're really happy that we have. Thank you. Lance, can you give the um, date of the Planning Commission meeting to these folks one, once more? I know it was given in the beginning. Uh, absolutely. It's um, October 19th. Um, I'm not sure of the time slot, but um, it, it, it'll be in a regular Planning Commission meeting. Um, it can be accessed on the, by the Elbron County's um, website on the county calendar. And also, if somebody would like to um, have help, with a computer at Yancey Community Center, or I think was it the Fifth Street office building, Lance, that was offered in the in the letter? Could you correct me if I'm wrong? But you gave two two options. Oh, well, we we identified um, several um, community facilities where broadband could be accessed um, for, from parking lots, um, and for some of those. Uh, Buildings uh, are are open internally as well, um, like the the Scottsville uh, Gymnasium, others the the Scottsville um, Elementary uh, and uh, the Yancey Community Center uh, are gen generally open to the public. But there's there's um, good Wi-Fi um, within those buildings um, to serve the community. But we we, we can certainly make sure that there's um, uh, uh, availability. Uh, if it's people, let us know in advance, especially with the Yancey Community Center. I'm pretty sure we could we could manage that. And uh, just to finish up on the Planning Commission, the meeting started six. The final agenda is not set yet, so I don't know the number of items, but the meeting does begin at six o'clock uh, that night, uh, October 19th. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much for everybody yeah. who came tonight. Thank, Thank you. Have a great evening. Yeah. Good night, everybody.